Sane Logic Weather Station. Got one right here. I already have a couple different weather stations that do different things, and I've got another one coming up for some remote reads, but that'll be a future video. The cover here is a Sane Logic unit that was provided to me from Sane Logic. Makes sense to uh, test and demonstrate, and I've got a specific uh, spot in use for this. We're going to be putting it up at camp um, along the river on uh, somewhere around our cabana so that I will be able to do a little weather monitoring up there because I'm kind of a freak about monitoring weather. We're going to get into this thing coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And as I mentioned there at the very beginning, uh, this provided me by Sane Logic to uh, test and demonstrate, which is what I'm going to do. It is similar to some of the other ones that you see at a higher price. However, this one does not have Wi-Fi, and that's fine because where I'm putting it, which is going to be at our cabana up at camp along the uh, river, there's no Wi-Fi up there. So it would, that would be a waste of money there. But I think this is going to be ideal for what I need to use it for up there. I'm going to unbox this. I'll show you how to set this up. It's pretty simple. All you're going to need, three AA batteries, three AAA batteries, and a place to plug in the uh, desktop remote unit. So we'll get into unboxing this. Of course, I've already peeked in here. It comes with an instruction manual. And it's very thorough, too. It'll cover absolutely everything you need to know about this unit. It also has some alarm functions. It's got a little quick start menu thing here. You have some mounting hardware. You have some mounting brackets, depending on how you want to mount it. I'm going to temporarily be putting this on uh, the deck to the shop here on the railing, and I'll be mounting it like this uh, to let it run for a week. I won't be getting back up to camp for another week. So it'll be a good way to give it a little bit of a test. This here will be the remote display unit. You can activate the warranty too. And it's got a little plastic thing you're going to need to pull off, like so. Very simple. It's got a little stand. Kicks out. Set it on the desk. And get that out of the way. So there's not a whole lot to this. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Here's the unit itself. And there's a pole down here. If I can get a hold of it, there's a pole. A hole here it goes into with some hardware. We'll get to that in a moment little power supply here. I'm sure this is just nothing but a wall wart. That's what I call a wall wart. Is one of those things that you plug onto the wall and it takes up space. That's exactly what it is. So get rid of some trash here. We'll get this thing put together. The first part of the assembly, and there's really not much to this, it's a little hole here. You'll see. And one side will hold the nut captive. It's got, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on camera. It's got a little recess there for the nut to set into. These little nuts and bolts like so. Insert that through one side, it'll come out the other side. Provided right you have the pole lined up at well. You can also take a little screwdriver and just kind of help it along too. Yep, just like that. It's a matter of getting everything aligned right, getting the stars aligned, I guess you could say. The nut started on there, and this up on the other side. And it just needs to be snug, you don't need to really crank on it. Okay, as I said, I'm going to be mounting this flat onto the deck rail out there, so I'll be mounting it like this, and putting my pole in like this, and putting some screws down through. An alternate is to mount it vertically. There's a hole here you can, you can set it this way. And another alternate is to go around a pipe. Okay, to mount it to a pipe you'd be using these two pieces and you'd use the center set of holes here that would clamp around your pipe and then your uh, unit would fit into this hole on the top if it's this way or there if it was this way. Pretty self-explanatory there. So let me get this set in here, and then the mounting this is going to be pretty much the same. Well, that's a snug fit there. There we go. You'll see there's a little hole here with a picture of a nut. That's the side the nut goes on. Once again, the same little nut and bolt. 
They do supply the hardware if you're going to use pipe clamp. That's just here for mounting a direct down. They some some stainless steel screws. The nut will fit in that little recess. And there again, just snug it up. You don't need to really crank that down in there. Okay, you need to install the batteries. The bottom of the unit here, the little trap door. One of the things I tell you in the instruction book is to make absolutely sure you get the polarity correct when you put the batteries in, or you could damage the sensors. It's very clearly marked in here which way they go. Of course, the negative always goes down under the spring. There's also a little gasket in there that keeps this thing weather tight. So we need three, three AAA batteries. Like so. Cover back on. There again, just snug it, don't crank down and break something. So we are this far with it. Of course, there's a solar panel here. That solar panel does not charge batteries, it just allows it to run on uh, solar power when the sun's shining. So trying to put uh, lithium ion batteries or something like that in here, rechargeables, is, this does not charge battery. Okay, the next thing will be to put the batteries in the uh, remote unit here and to connect your power to it. It takes three triple A's. There again, it's pretty obvious which way they go. And it'll beep. And you'll get a very dim display here at first so we get the uh, other power put up to it. Look in the back here under this little desktop stand, there's a little hole in the side. Right there, that's where the your DC adapter goes. Plug that in. If you're going to hang this on the wall, you can clip that down, a couple screws. I'm going to be using the desktop application here. So it didn't take long to find it itself. We have a display here. Okay, we're going to need to set a few things here. By default, it's in Fahrenheit. Uh, you can also change it to centigrade. Button here on the side says set. Hold that for about three seconds. Okay, we want 12 hour mode, so I'm going to leave it at that. Press set again. Set the hour. Buttons on the top here, plus and minus. And it is 1.50 p.m. Here's my hours. And just the 50. Set again. Month and day, it's June 25th. Well, that's the way it's going to display is month and day. So, now the date. Up here to 6. Date. They have the 25th. If you hold the button down, it'll advance quickly. Twenty twenty, a couple years behind, so we need to change that. Okay, we're in Fahrenheit. Or if we're going to use miles miles per hour, you can also do knots or kilometers per hour if you wish. We're going to measure rain in inches. That's blinking clear down here at the bottom. You can also do it in M&Ms. That would be millimeters. And mercury. Inches of mercury is how I'm operating. Bar barometer. And you can pick how you want your picture to be there. And we are in the northern hemisphere. That's how I'm setting this up. That's what the NOR stands for. If you change that to the southern hemisphere, if you're down under, there's a little bit different setup on how you mount this. And there's our display. So it's 81 degrees in here. It's 81 degrees there. It's 83 here because I got this in my hands, which probably warmed it up a little bit. 
So they give you a couple of things they want you to test. And one of them is uh, the wind speed. It's turning a little bit right now because they've got a fan blowing over here. So this is pretty sensitive because that fan's on low speed and it's across the room. So if I give this a spin, we should get a gust here. Okay, I gusted that to 5.1 miles per hour. Now for the rain gauge side, that's this little funnel thing on top here, it goes down into a rain gauge. You tip this back and forth and you should hear it click. Okay, there, so we have, every time that you hear that click, it's one one-hundredth of an inch. And I did it eight times, so we have eight hundredths of an inch of precipitation. So all that part works. So I need to take this outside and get it mounted. Now, for the mounting here, there's a S right here. It says south. So I'll be mounting this so that that faces south. I know exactly what due south is here because I have two other weather stations around here, so I know exactly where it is. That way my wind direction will be correct. And you'll also get the best charge, or the best uh, exposure to the solar cell. So I'm going to take this out and get it mounted, and we'll come back in here and see what the display says. It's also important to have it level. There's a little level button right on top. This is where I've got it mounted for now. I'll leave it here for about a week and then we'll take it up to camp. Okay, so as you can see, we're reading what's going on outside. Little wind gusts here and there. A little bit of a breeze blowing today. Not much. A little warmer in here than it is outside, but the humidity in here is only slightly lower. 82.8 outside, 70% humidity. Um, yeah, it's pretty humid. If you live... Uh, Let's say out in Denver, Colorado or something, that, that kind of humidity is going to be unheard of to you. But that's what we get here in the Midwest, and if you live down south, you know all about it. Okay, something else you can set on this, and I'm not going to set them, are alarms. And there are a ton of them you can set. It's very thorough on how to set alarms. And there are just a bunch you can set with high and low, and 24 different ones. Alarms you can set there. I'm not going to set any alarms on this because the console of this will be inside of our camper up there and we're not going to be up there if it's below freezing anyway and I don't need that thing going off in the middle of the night because we got a whole bunch of rain or something. We have a weather radio if we're getting severe weather that will go off which will wake us up. But these are uh, the 24 alarms you can set. Very easy to do. It will guide you through here step by step. And there is a snooze button on the top if the alarm does go off, which will silence the alarm for five minutes. Me, I'd be turning it off. But Anyway, that does have that feature. I'm not going to be using it, but I just wanted to point out that it was there. So there's the Sane Logic weather station. We've got the remote, got it mounted out there temporarily. Where, Like I said, we're going to take it up there to camp, put it uh, on the railing out by the cabana. We'll be able to monitor things from inside the camper. Uh, it's nice to get up in the morning and be able to know what temperature is outside, especially early in the year and late in the year, so you kind of have an idea how to dress. Always curious how much rain we get, and it won't be in an ideal location because of where it's going to be mounted. If we get a wind out of the east, it's going to be blocked. But getting wind out of the east around here is very, very rare. It generally comes out of the south, west, or north, and if it's coming out of the northwest, it's usually pretty chilly. It comes out of the south, it's usually pretty strong and warm. That's where we get all the warmth from. So if you're interested in one of these, there'll be a link in the description where you can get them. You can get them on Amazon. It's a nice inexpensive unit for what it is. Like I say, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but I don't need Wi-Fi up there. I don't need it networked or anything like that. I just need the basic functions. And this looks like it'll work out just perfect. Uh, they do tell you to use uh, lithium batteries if you're going to have it out for cold weather operation where it's uh, below zero centigrade or below 32 Fahrenheit. Uh, we won't be up there when it's that cold, so I'm not really concerned about that. When I say lithium batteries, I do not mean lithium ion rechargeables. Once again, that solar cell does not charge batteries. It just powers it when it's out in the sun. 
So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.